Uh, hey folks, uh, we're here looking at Darwinia Plus for Xbox Live Arcade, and I'm joined by uh, two of the people from Introversion. Gentlemen, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Mark Morris, Introversion's Managing Director. It's great to be here. I didn't think it rained in San Francisco, but Constantly. It, it absolutely does. In Sausalito so, as well, so, uh, yeah, so, so welcome and enjoy the rain. Feeling very much at home. <laughs> Did it follow you here across <laughs> the, right, across the right. pond? Yeah, we brought it with us. Excellent. And uh, I'm uh, Chris DeLay. I'm the Creative Director of Introversion Software, which means that I kind of design all of our weird-ass games. <laughs> and weird-ass indeed. Let's, let's jump into Darwinia Plus sure. and uh, check out this intro movie so uh, people can, I guess, at least start to get a feel for uh, what this game is all about. Exactly. Understand uh, the story a little bit, the context, if you like, for um, Darwinia Plus. We didn't think it, uh, they were going to let us do that with their logo. Um, so Darwinia, uh, it is supposed to be a digital world that exists on the internet. So. In this uh, opening sequence, you're flying through the internet to uh, this world of Darwinia. We think this is um, similar to kind of like the opening credits to Jurassic Park, you know, when they're all flying in to see this uh, wonderful world that's been created. Darwinia has been created by uh, a guy called Dr. Sepulveda, and uh, from, uh, I think it's Sepulveda. Okay. Avenue in, um, in, in L.A. So we'll yes. the, yeah, we were in L.A. and um, you just thought that was a cool name. Thought it was a cool name for a bad guy, <laughs> right? And so <laughs> we say, why not Darwin? But yeah, sure. Yeah. This is that's a way way better name. Yeah. So um, Sepulveda created uh, this digital world, and um, he created the Darwinians inside it, and the Darwinians evolved to the point that uh, they kind of became alive, and then Sepulveda decided that he would open this up as a bit of a theme park uh, to players. So this is kind of the player. Um, flying into uh, to Darwinia, but you'll see that uh, it starts going a little bit wrong. There's a problem with um, Darwinia. And as you play through the game, you learn about how that problem, uh, that problem came about. So you can see now it's sort of saying errors detected in, in data stream. In a second it will um, uh, it'll bring us through to the next, uh, the next phase. This, this seems very, uh, very much in line with the the highly abstracted kind of symbolic uh, worlds and settings that a lot of the introversion games uh, take place in. Yeah, exactly. We um, don't want to fight on the same playing field as the big developers. Sure. And they choose things like uh, huge amounts of content and photorealistic graphics to be kind of their battlefield. And we're only eight guys, so if we tried to go in that direction, you would immediately see that we just couldn't keep up. So right. we try to go for something different, and for us it's being immersive and self-consistent and unique uh, graphical styles that you can look at and immediately recognize as, um, as introversion, or in this case, as, as Darwinia. So now we're here at the, uh, the, the main menu right, screen, and we've exactly. got two, two big options going that's on right, That's right, that's right. So um, we originally uh, made Darwinia, which is um, a, a campaign story-driven game. There's about ten campaign maps in there, which we'll, we'll play through in a minute. Um, but when we signed the Live Arcade deal, Microsoft said that we needed to put some multiplayer in there, and we ended up creating a full multiplayer uh, experience as well, which we launched on PC uh, last year called Multiwinia. So we ended up with two quite different games actually they, they play quite differently the controls are uh, subtly different and we needed a way to immediately communicate to everybody that's playing that uh, there are two different games in this package okay and so that's where the split screen came from so if you go back to the split screen um, we've got Darwinia on the right yeah. and Darwinia is a kind of clean world but Multiwinia on the left is much dirtier, it's much darker, it's supposed to, thematically it's happened after the Darwinia world, the Multiwinians have kind of become a lot more violent, so you can see, uh, you know, some of the, the names now are like Biohazard and Wall Garden and, you know, uh, Prison Block and things, they're a bit darker than the kind of... Um, I, see, I see some smoke there as well. Yeah. That's yeah. right, they, they've like smashed up their, their kind of world a bit. Well, let's, um, let's go back to when things were more idyllic, let's, let's yeah. jump into Darwinia Plus here. Or I guess into Darwinia. Yeah. Exactly. So the overall package is Darwinia Plus. That's right. The individual parts, Darwinia and Multiwinia. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Chris, do you want to sort of talk? Yeah, sure. I mean, so this is this is the guy that Mark was talking about. This is Sepulveda Boulevard, basically, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise known as Doctor Sepulveda. He's the he's the creator of the world, you know, this digital world. And um, you know, we tried we wanted to have Sir Clive Sinclair, basically. That's who he's kind of meant to be. Okay. You know, he's like this '80s mad professor, and he's <laughs> built this he's built this virtual world. And inside this virtual world. He has created a race of sentient life forms that, he, that are called the Darwinians. Um, now, but at the point when you arrive as the, as the player, everything's kind of gone wrong in this world. 
and um, a computer virus has infected all of his com all of the computers okay. that, that are running the world of Darwinia. And this is the computer virus, right? This evil red form over here, and it takes various different forms throughout the game. You know, this is its kind of simplest form. Sometimes it takes a much larger, more solid form, like, such as the centipede, for example. Okay. Um, and your job as the player is to help him kind of run his antivirus on on the world of Darwinia and restore the Darwinians back to full life. And you do that by um, creating various sort of various units in the game. So these are the primary units in Darwinia. This is the this is the death squad, and they're effectively um, they're like antivirus software, but like with attitude. Okay. They're like antivirus with guns, basically. <laughs> you know. And so you have to go and clean out the virus from these infected computers with a nice little bit of you know precision application of violence kind of thing. <laughs> you know. So yeah. as far as the controls here, you're not you're not directly controlling these guys, but you're appointing them in the, yeah. the general direction. No, I'm directly controlling them. This is oh, okay. very much a, a left a left thumbstick job to move these guys around like okay. this. The camera just follows you around, shows you what you're doing, gotcha. and a right thumbstick to fire their lasers um, in, a, in a circle all the way around you. Um, as soon as you deselect them, um, you in a, you're in a more of an RP, uh, an RTS type camera now, okay, more yeah. of a free camera, more about managing units from a higher level. Now, um, so we've cleared this area out, and you can see that there's like these, this glowing blue orb thing over here. This is a bit of software research that he's been working on. Okay. And when you collect these up, you get um, power-ups and uh, advantages to your team, basically. Now, this guy, so this guy is an engineer. He's basically a software debugging tool that Dr. Sepulveda uses. He's based on a, mo a movie which... Uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, the thing from Tron. We don't even let's, need let's, to tell you not, what movie not. it's from. We love Tron. Right? I, I found out yesterday they have a name. What, what are they called, mate? Can you, get, can you remember? Oh, God. Is that, it's, uh, it's the name of the game. It's the Recognizer, I think. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I was thinking of the... They're, they're called the Recognizer. Right. And they're basically just... They, these guys, you don't control these guys directly. They just kind of do their thing. They'll reprogram buildings or capture research. Okay, so they'll, so what, they'll just kind of roam around what you are here running and gunning. Yeah, so that, what that was there, that was a grenade power-up. So whilst firing your lasers with your right thumbstick, you can pull on the right trigger and throw a couple of, uh, throw a couple of grenades. Uh, other than Tron, what would you say is like the, the, your big inspiration for the this highly unique art style that you've got going here? Uh, Tron is definitely a big, a big one. I mean, we're all Amiga fans, being from 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 England. Certainly. And, uh, on the Amiga, there was a great graphics program called uh, called Vista. Okay. Um, long before Microsoft uh, yeah. tarnished the word. Oh, I shouldn't say that, should I? You've got to edit that out. Yeah, so no, okay. get rid of that. Oh, yeah. yeah, no. They're, long before the excellent, excellent. They're not currently advertising. It was with Microsoft those, so. Vista, and there was Vista on the Amiga, and, uh -huh. it, and it did these fractal landscapes. All of our landscapes are kind of built using fractals and things, yeah. and they had those sort of chunky flat shaded look and we just love that look. Well, I, I love the know. wire framing and, yeah, and yeah, exactly. kind of the, and the glow, the monitor And it's the meant to be in a computer as everything. well. It's meant to be the inside of a computer, but right. the inside of a computer that like an 80s reclusive genius would have built, you know, so he hasn't seen all this modern hardware going on. So what he's telling me to do at the moment, he's telling me to use my engineer from over here to reprogram this building. It's not currently, currently it's infected with a virus, that's why it's flashing red. Okay. So you can't use anything when it's So red, red is bad. Red is bad and blue is good. And so I'm just going to create another one to speed it up. Now what they'll do is these guys, these engineers, will reprogram this building using the nearby control I like, tower. I like the go to command. Yeah, yeah right, go to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 10 print hello, 20 go to 10. Ah, <laughs> oh, misspent youth. <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. still what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. That's still what we're doing. So either, what either it was not a misspent youth, or this is also misspent adulthood. <laughs> yeah, right. So. so you might notice that the, the virus that we killed, that the computer virus, it left behind these little red uh, orbs. Yeah. And your engineers will collect those up um, on their own and drop them into this building, which is an incubator. And it converts them back into the, the Darwinians that they started out as. There so here they we are. are. Here's, Here's the a few man. little Darwinians finally making their appearance. And they're nice little 2D fellas. They just, you know, at the moment, in, this is very early in the game, so they're completely docile. They don't have any weapons or any combat abilities or anything like that. Um, but the world started out with just the Darwinians. Yeah. Right? So, and and they've, they've all been killed and turned into the virus. And so this is how you kind of progress in the game, by killing the virus, collecting the souls of the fallen virus, and yeah. converting them back into Darwinians. Now, if I push on, um, once you've got grenades, it's a little bit easier. These guys are very vulnerable to a nice bit of area of effect grenade blast. They're kind of, the, these guys, these are the most basic forms of virus and they're pretty weak on their own. Now how much uh, graphically has Darwinia changed since you originally released on the PC, which was 
Some, some time ago. It was some time ago, yeah. It's a reasonable amount. We have definitely done some upgrades. And they're, they're, they're kind of like, we didn't want to completely change everything. Uh -huh. We liked our visual style. We have things like we have little nice little blobble shaders on the on the soles that kind of pulsate, you know, give yeah. them a bit of a nice warped look. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we have things like we have nicer water reflections and things. No, that was in the PC version. Okay. You know, and... Um, so little, little touches. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just richer. Um, we didn't want to go far away from the original PC game that we made, you know, and, and people, it's easy to make that mistake. Um, Microsoft are very big on having kind of differentiators, you know, yeah. make, make it look different to the, sure, the PC sure. version. But um, it's got a real charm to it, Darwinian, and um, all we've done, when you go and look at the PC version now, like the original version 1 PC um, version, it doesn't. It looks flat. It looks boring. It looks less interesting than, than kind of what we've um, what mm. we, we've managed here. So one particular company that shall remain nameless did ask us if we could put facial expressions yeah. on the Darwinians yeah. and have yeah. them animate. And yeah. at that point, we thought, well, you've kind of missed the point. Really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, although we, we did upgrade the Darwinians, they were originally 32 by 32 sprites, and now they're 64 by 64. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So we've gone into HD definition there with our, by doubling their resolution up. And the Darwinians, of course, they're meant to be a sentient race, right? They're meant to be alive. Uh -huh. So Dr. Sabovet, I won't have any of you giving them direct programming in their brain or anything, because they're meant to have free will. But what you can do is you can promote Darwinians to officers. Now, they remain in their Darwinian form, but they've kind of become three-dimensional. Uh -huh. And the little Darwinians around them will listen to the officer. Okay. And so if I tell the officer to say, you know, go over to this area, a bit more of an a bit more of a RTS element now, and less, less of a direct action. Okay. You'll stand there just permanently saying, yeah, go over there, go over there, you know. If you're, uh, if you're a Darwinian, go over there. Basically that, yeah. So as the Darwinians are being born, they're immediately seeing his order, and oh, Jesus, oh, oh, then, you know. <laughs> and they're immediately heading off, you know, just to where I pointed them. And this is how you generally ferry your, your new formed Darwinians around the map. Now, at the moment, these guys are, um, they're pretty, they're pretty defenseless. If I, if I would be a little bit cool and sort of send them over here to go and have a look at this centipede. Um, they'll, they, they, You're just murdering those Darwinians. Yeah, I know. I've, I've killed <laughs> so many Darwinians in my life. <laughs> this is a demonstration. They didn't need to suck. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're, it's, uh, yeah, it's, not, <laughs> it's, not, it's not good. The centipede will have his way with them. They'll try their best to stay out of his way. He is, of course, his namesake. He is based on the classic video game centipede. And um, as you shoot him, he will break up into small oh, parts and, uh, and get a little bit harder to deal with. Um, and, if, and actually, each, each monster in the world has a different relationship with the, the sort of dead souls that are left behind as well. So if you leave him around for long enough, he'll eat all those souls up and he'll get longer again. You know, he'll kind of regrow okay. to full size. All the different monsters in the world, are, are, you know, they kind of reproduce in a slightly different way. Cool, I think that's probably enough down range, you think? Yeah. Why, why would you think that faces were what the game needed? It's a very good <laughs> question, actually. <laughs> Like of anything, yeah. of anything that you can choose to critique. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know, it needs f faces on they the They have the charm. They, they, they flee from danger. They make, they, they make the sounds. They, these guys here, so because there's nothing going on at the moment, these guys know that they're dead Darwinians and dead, dead souls. And they, uh -huh. you can see they sit around and they have a little bit of a, little bit of a sort of a ritual that goes on about worshipping these, uh, these dead souls. And huh. they, they believe in the afterlife. You know? They know about the way the world works. So they, these guys have got little... Um, these little box kite things, they're like a, like a candle in a box kite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The souls, if you leave them for long enough, they'll eventually float away. They'll just rise upwards from the world. And the Darwinians believe the box kite can kind of guide the soul back into the afterlife. So, yeah. so before we move on to Multiwinnie, a couple mm -hmm. just quick questions. Uh, general uh, length of the, the single player campaign in Darwinia, what are we looking at? Mm. It's got, it's, there's ten different levels, okay. and there's this introductory level, which we made just for the Xbox version. Okay. This is very much designed to draw new players in, to give them, give them a clue about what's going on in the game. Um, and uh, uh, probably a good ten hours worth of, of play. And uh, the, uh, my other question, the, uh, the, the doctor, whose headshot is that really? <laughs> He's a guy uh, called Peter Hutchison, okay. and uh, he used to work with my wife, actually. Oh. Um, we, we'd asked Sir Clive Sinclair, and he'd basically not responded <laughs> if we could use his face. And um, it was literally two months before the launch of the PC version, and we still didn't have anyone. And I met this guy at um, my wife's Christmas party, uh -huh. and he just looked perfect, right? He just had this perfect bald head. <laughs> Here's my card. I want to take pictures of your face. Yeah, and so I just, I make I you just, an evil scientist. I just got my wife to go and ask him to do it, basically. <laughs> <It's> better. <laughs> and just said, you know, can we take your picture and put it in a video game? He, ca right. he came to the original Darwinia launch party, and because I don't think he knew, you know, he just like, yeah, you can use me in a video game, whatever. I don't know. And then he came to the party, and, and so we had sort of. 50 or 60 kind of hardcore Darwinia fans there, all of which lining up to get his 
autograph. <laughs> and I think he was kind of thinking, what, what have I got myself into? What, what, yeah. what is all this stuff? He was going to be the face of some random character somewhere, but no. Yeah, that's right. He's, he's front and center. He didn't well, anticipate the cult following that was going to come. Well, let's yeah. jump into the... Uh... Actually, I'll show you one more thing, which okay. is that um, if you... Those, this, this idea of the Darwinian afterlife, they're... they're hmm, what's this? I no, that's what it was. Yeah. So basically, this is the this is the inside of Darwinia. Ah. We were just in one location there. It wasn't garden. It was like the introductory level. So this is the start of the game, and this is the world, and this is the afterlife built into the inside of this location. So all of these uh, dots that you can see around these are souls of Darwinians that have died recently, making their way back to the afterlife at the centre of the world. Okay. Um, and the way that it basically works is that the Darwinians uh, they they. Uh, the, the, their dead souls kind of merge together in this afterlife and they get reordered based on how successful they were in life and they kind of cross-pollinate and then they get sent back down to the world again to kind of live another life. Now, is any of this know? stuff, like, explicit in the game or is a very lot of this... Very much so, yeah, okay, very okay. much so, in the later parts of the game. Because uh, the whole world of Darwinia is offline because it's been infected with a virus. Everything's broken. Okay. So your job as a player is to bring it all back online. So in the later halves of the game, you're very much bringing back online this whole evolutionary system that's been built to make the Darwinians grow and evolve as a race. It's pretty heady stuff. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's, <laughs> we love that It's a good story. It's a good yeah. story. And, and you find out at the end... Um, no, don't tell them that. Uh, <laughs> don't spoil it. I don't know what happens, don't but, spoil but um, you, you find out how the world got into this state. You know, so um, it's, it's definitely a good, um, uh, a, good, a good 10 hours and a good story. It's, it's a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, let's, uh, yeah. let's see that... Uh, Let's see the destruction. Let's see the chaos. Yeah, Let's so see the multi so multi see the then. The other side, they're like two sides of the coin, basically. And multi is is many generations later. Okay. It's thousands of Darwinian generations later. And because you've helped the Darwinians to go from this kind of cattle-like uh, passive race to mm -hmm. be able to defend themselves and fight off the virus, um, they've, they've become a lot more aware of what's going on. And, of course, uh, they've started to fight amongst themselves as well. And civil war has kind of broken out on Darwinia. And the Darwinians are um, busy fighting over the limited resources in their world. And in the process, they've just totally you know, they've wrecked the place, basically. You know, so you, it's like a mixed blessing that you gave them this awakening you know, during the game. Now, so Darwinia... The burden of self-awareness. Very much so, yeah. And it's just, it's just turned to war, basically. And, and, and an indecision, and they can't agree on what they, what they should be doing with the world. And so Darwinia was, is this story-driven... Uh, very spiritual epic. Darwinia, uh, multi one year is like just a war game, right? Just a, a good old war game. I was going to say, know? it seemed like you guys might yeah. have some sort of message you're trying to get across here. I don't no, know. no, not particularly. <laughs> no, not, not, no, nothing particularly uh, over, overtly political. You know, they're just a race that were armed to the teeth long before they should have been, basically. <laughs> and they weren't. They weren't. They're not advanced enough. So, so, so I saw there's both a single player and multiplayer option here in Multiwinia. Is that just a matter yes. of whether you're playing against bots or that's exactly it, live yeah. players? All right, you can play up to four players in Multiwinia. Okay. And um, of those four players, any number of them can be bots. Excellent. Well, um, let's get let's load it up with some bots. If you don't happen to have any friends, <laughs> you can't find anyone online. So basically, Multiwinia has five different game modes, five different five different battlefronts where different f types of fights are occurring in the world. All right. And it's got about 50 battle maps that you can play on. Um, again, as Mark was saying earlier, you know, we spent a lot of time. We started out with um, quite simple multiplayer, um, uh, and because it was a requirement for Xbox Live, right? just to have multiplayer. Yeah. But then, you know, it kind of sucked what we'd done. We just did it really quickly. Uh -huh. It's a bit crap, really. And it's because we just we weren't we weren't putting the effort in, and we just thought we can't release this. You know, we just can't release this game with really poor multiplayer. We're just gonna have to spend a lot of time doing it, and that's kind of why it's taken us so many years to get this game get this game done and up there. You know. And you feel this is, you, you, you've nailed it. You're happy with it. Yeah, Excellent. I think so. I think <laughs> the two sides of Darwinian and Multiwinian together in one package is brilliant. It's, we think of it as like the director's cut, like the best version of the game. It's all, because it's all together for the first time, it all just kind of makes sense. Right. So let's try some, uh, I'll try some King of the Hill, I think. They're, they're kind of in order of complexity, those game modes that are, that are running there. King of the Hill is uh, a, a, nice, a nice, simple, quick battle. You know, like quick, very good, quick, very quick good. Fight. So we're, we're dealing with now multiple types of... Uh... Multiple types of Darwinians now. So here's us. Here's our green Darwinians all over again. And uh, this time they're armed, right? They're armed to the teeth. You can still use the officers, just like we were doing in the single-player game. And you can see that these buildings that we started with, these are kind of like the incubator that we had uh -huh. earlier, but now they're just permanently connected. Okay. They're permanently receiving reinforcements. So every 20 seconds or so, you'll get another batch of Darwinians coming out. So no resource management then? No direct base building, no real resource management. This is very much a, a quick... This is a 10-minute map. Okay. And this is one of the biggest maps... Oh, it's timed and everything. ...that you can play. 
And you can see that the red team are already on the move. There's a blue team over there and a yellow team over there, all very much going for ownership of this location. Now, the, in, this being king of the hill, the aim of the game is to take these, uh, these zones. These king of, the king of the hill zones, when you occupy them, they turn your color and you start receiving points every second. So you can see in the top left of the screen, there's the scoreboard. We're now yeah. picking up two points a second for our two zones that we have here. So you can see that at the very middle of the map, there's a three, which is obviously a very important uh, Okay, so each, big score. each ring then represents... Yeah. Every ring represents one point per second. Got it. And then on top of that, of course, there are more spawn points, such as this one, that you can occupy. And once they turn your color, you just get more reinforcements. Right? And so you can gradually build bigger and bigger armies of Darwinians. And you can have thousands of Darwinians fighting over these locations. What's the... Uh is there a hard system limit for how many Darwinians you can have in a game? Uh, there is, but it's pretty high. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty hard to reach you it. You can get a lot of carnage. I mean, yeah, if, you, if you occupy yeah. the entire map, um, by that point you've effectively won anyway, and so the game will stop at that point. Um, but you can get a lot. Um, so at random points in time, you'll see uh, power-ups. Here's one. I these these crates, crates falling from the sky. And um, when you capture those, people fight over these, and when you capture them, they give you a random, uh, random power up. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's. So is that a little Team Seventeen shout out? A little or? bit, of, a little bit of worms going on in there, yeah. definitely. Sometimes they're good, and sometimes they're not so good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we picked up uh, one that's called Subversion. Uh, so if I run that on our guys, that converts their lasers into mind control rays, just for about thirty seconds. So you can see that any enemy red Darwinians that have been hit will turn green. Right. They'll just defect to our side. And be converted into our army. It's a really good way to increase your numbers. Oh man! <laughs> you know, and just so that's, that's permanent. Once you hit them, no, with they, that? they have it for like you can see the timer at the bottom of the screen. Right, right, but the effect is permanent. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're on your team permanently. Yeah, but uh, the actual brainwashing technique that these guys have is is only temporary. Certainly. Let's see what's going on. Um, oh, we're actually, I want not so I'm seeing these these uh, these power lines going from from one base to another. Yeah. I, I assume then that you have to. They're bringing. In, they're you have to remain connected. They're, yeah, they're bringing in. The, they're bringing in. Oh dear, they're, <laughs> they're bringing in. Their, that's unfortunate. They're bringing in um, new souls. Oh God, those Dar Darwinians are on fire. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're it's not good for a Darwinian when he catches fire. It's, it's sort of the end for him. You know? <laughs> it does happen actually. The trees are notoriously flammable. Um, some some of the power ups uh, that you can get, they they just create new forests and areas. And so you can precede areas with forestry and then burn it down afterwards, just to clear out the area. So beyond uh, the the crates and uh, these these command units, is there uh, any other t sort of uh, units to be dealt with here? No, that's pretty much all of it. It's pretty right. much so. Darwinia is very much about the squaddies and the and the fast action, yeah. um, action controls. Very much cannon fodder and syndicate, old Amiga classics. Yeah, yeah. Um, and multi winnier is much more about the Darwinians themselves and controlling them. So you might notice that for the first time you can now select Darwinians using a group select and give them direct orders. That's nice and you can directly say to them, you know, you guys go over there. Or you can use the officers to give them a permanent sort of standing order, just like you do there. This is one game mode, and um, in some of the more complex later game modes, such as Blitzkrieg, for example, you get armor units uh, to rapidly move Darwinians around the map. Okay. So, uh, sometimes you have space rockets that you try to lift off from the ground. Each of the five game modes is, is, is quite different, and they're all kind of their own, they've got their own feel to it. Well, this one seems pretty chaotic, for sure. That's definitely the aim. Yeah, the aim is very much... This is not Command and Conquer, you know. This is not like the slow base building and gradual stuff. This is very much uh, crazy, fast action and just basically laughing at Darwinians <laughs> on fire. <laughs> you can get Always. some great power-ups. You can get some flamethrowers and some miniguns that you can control directly, and they've got um, kill counters on them, so you can see how many Darwinians you've murdered in the, you know, the time that you were using the gun. So we, we wanted it to be quite funny, you know. So we tried to put sort of comedy references in all over the place. So um, hopefully, you have a bit of a giggle when you're playing. There's nothing better than nuking your, your best friend's home base. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned you're a DEF CON fan, didn't you? Yes, uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. We, there, is a, there is a nuclear weapon uh, power-up that you can get, which is deployed by the DEF CON submarine. Oh, wow. They, <laughs> nice. <That's laughs> they, they rise up out of the water, and then the nuke trails come, come flying in. And I'm, I'm noticing uh, maybe a certain amount of, of similarity in, in pace between a, a multiplayer uh, DEF CON game and this, mm. where it's, you know, most DEF CON games that I played would not last more than 10 minutes. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, especially if you play it on speed DEF CON. Yeah. And it's all over. Oh, wait, wait, that's a nice one. Let's see. Oh, so you can see the enemy, the enemy here put the Darwinians into a formation. This is like a defensive formation to stop us from approaching in that direction. 
It's very good. So you can't, they can't fire backwards, basically. Ah. Um, um, but they're, they're very effective forwards. So ordinarily, just marching straight at them wouldn't be such a good idea. But if I give my guys rage, they switch their weapons onto full auto, <laughs> basically, <laughs> <laughs> and, just, uh, and just let them have it. You know? it's, it's, it's quite an effective... The crates are there because they, they, they upset the battle. You know? Right. You can Mixed have a stale... Oh, wow. They've got subversion. Oh, OK. Well, that's interesting. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like you might come out on top. Yeah, that, uh, that many lasers. Uh, yeah, I think we, we pretty much. Oh, were that. you wondering whether they would they were going to retain their? Yeah, full they, well, auto. they would convert our guys, and then they would have rage on their guys. They're <laughs> just being converted. So yeah, uh, shields. That's more stuff. This is more stuff about um, these are like defensive shields. It doesn't work against grenades, unfortunately, for those guys. Oh, what's magical forest? Where did that happen? That just popped up. Yeah, so this is, I was telling you earlier, that you can grow forests in different areas. So someone planted a magic forest over here. So what's going to happen is a, a forest will slowly spring up in this area uh -huh. and just fill this entire area up. It has different uses. So a magical forest actually drops souls, dead souls. Yeah. Um, and so you can, you, and then you can harvest them and turn them into more Darwinians. But they're also a bit of a fire risk, <laughs> the forests in general. The, the can be, it can be a, a good tactic to... Uh, as we saw with the, the big tree in the middle area. on fire earlier. Yeah, that one burns quite a lot, actually. That's not uncommon. Um, should we try a different game mode, do you think? Maybe some statue? Yeah, we can have a look at some statue. Different game mode? Uh, you know, I think, I think we're, we're about out of time oh, here okay. for this. Oh, I think we've, we've about run down the oh, clock. That's right. Yeah, OK. Uh, but thank you guys so much for, for coming through and, and showing us. It's been, it's been a real, real it's been a pleasure. pleasure. Yeah, it's been uh, yeah. really great to, uh, to be in here. Well, I'm sure, as, as we mentioned before we started recording, I'm sure you guys are, are thrilled after so long working on Darwinia in one form or another to have this final product put yeah, it out soon. It's, it's, been, it's been a long time, as I was saying. Um, we, we always wanted to be doing kind of new and original things, so sticking with uh, Darwinia for so long has been um, challenging, yeah. shall we say. But, uh, <laughs> We've, um, we're really, really pleased with, with what's happened here and um, the, the product on Live Arcade. It's coming out on February the 10th, so it's not long uh, either. And um, yeah, hopefully it's, uh, it's going to do really well and uh, enable us to concentrate on some new stuff. Yeah. So February 10th, Xbox Live Arcade, that's yep. 15 bucks? Uh, 1,200 points. 1,200 yeah, points. Seen, yeah. yep. uh, and uh, is that going to be all regions? Yep, yep, all regions. We're in all sorts of languages. You name, <laughs> you name it, we did it. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. uh, and yep. uh, chances to see this uh, in, on other platforms? Um, maybe we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I mean, we've, it's, been, it's taken us a long, long time to do this, and we really need to kind of flex our creative muscles in a slightly different direction for I a while. Could, I could totally but, understand um, that. If it, uh, if, it, if it picks up, if it does really well, then kind of never say never. Oh, look, this, you can see, like, one of our, <laughs> our statues, it's our commentary on, on in-game advertising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You laugh, but I bet there's hooks in there yeah. that you could put in-game advertising. Well, we did try to Actually, sell it. Actually, that's the funny thing. We, <laughs> we tried to sell the ad space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They we weren't having it. any of it. <laughs> yeah. like, the Darwinians do what? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> what's <So>. going on? <laughs> yeah. well, well, gentlemen, again, thank yeah. you so much for your time. Yeah, no that's problem. That's quite right. It's been a pleasure.